message is entitled The Perfect Father. As you obviously can see, I'm not a father. But, <laughs> but if I do become one someday, and I don't mean accidentally, <laughs>
a father gives to his children. Jesus said again in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. What did God give to us? His son. He sent Jesus into the world to die for our sins so we could be forgiven and live with him forever. Yeah. That's God's ultimate gift to us, but that's not the only gift that he has given us. What has God given me? You might ask. Look around at all you have. He's given us our homes, our parents, our skills, our talents, our intellect. He gives us sunshine and rain, our mother and cold weather, beautiful flowers and trees to decorate the landscape. He gives us birds to sing to us. He gives us animals and insects to clean up after us. He put in a hole in the atmosphere to give all the toxins we dump into the air a place so we wouldn't suffocate ourselves. <laughs> God gives to us every day of our lives. He feeds our needs, He answers our prayers, He tackles our problems. Our God is the giving God. Yes. There's a story about a single guy who was visiting his married friend. The married man who had a little boy was playing on the floor in front of them as they talked. As they talked, the married man made an odd comment. He pointed at his son and said, there goes my chance of ever having a boat. As soon as I get the hospital bill paid, he'll need braces. And by the time I get those paid for, he'll want a car. And once that paid off, it'll time to pay for college. By then, I'll be too old to want a boat. <laughs> sacrifice. There is some things in life fathers have to do because they have a greater obligation to provide for their children. As a father, you probably made a lots of sacrifices already. They're part of the job description and part of the joy of being a father. Your children may never fully understand how much you sacrifice for them. Personally, I don't. But that's what I think that's the way it should be. The last thing your children need to hear is, if it weren't for you, I'd had a boat. <laughs> <laughs> a father gives to his children, but more than the material things he provides as a dad must be emotionally available too. If spending time with your father isn't an option, here's something to keep in mind. Your Heavenly Father is always available. You can call on Him day or night. You could talk to Him about your troubles, your fears, your dreams, and He'll always listen. He is always available. Father gives. He is there for His children. Thirdly, a Father has expectations for His children. John 3.16 is God's plan of salvation. It shows us what He does for us. He gave His sons son so we could be saved and it shows us what he expects from us because it says that whoever believes in him. We have a role to play in our own salvation. God expects us to believe in him. He doesn't expect more than we can give, but he does expect us to do what, he, what we can. We don't have the capacity to be perfect. We don't have the capacity to pay the price for our own sins, but we do have the capacity to believe. Yes. This is what God expects from us. A good father has certain expectations for his children, certain requirements that must be met. He isn't unreasonable about it, but and he doesn't demand more than his children can give, but he does require a certain level of responsibility from his own children. John Grisham's book, The Testament, begins with a story about a man who succeeded in business beyond most people can imagine, amassing a fortune of $11 billion. Along the way, he married three times and fathered seven children. He provided for all of them financially, but he was emotionally absent as a father. He never expected much of them. He gave each child a no-strings-attached gift of $5 million on their on their 21st birthday, and each child squandered the money. 
Eventually, each child will wound up deep in death. It's not full of their father eagerly waiting him to die so they could collect their share of his will. Through this man was a success in the eyes of the world, he was a failure as a father and his children paid the price. This story is fiction but reflects the truth. It's similar to the Old Testament story of Eli. Eli was a man of God, a priest who served in the temple. Though Eli was a priest, he was a failure as a father. The sons of Eli had no respect of the law of God. They defiled sacrifices. They exhorted from those who brought offerings to God, and they slept with a woman who served in the temple. Eli knew about their behavior, but did nothing about it. As a result, God judged Eli. A father has a resp responsibility to set the child's standard for his children. He must say, this is the way we live, and nothing else is acceptable. And of course, it's the father's responsibility to lead by example. A father's attitude must be, do as I do, not merely do as I say. Joshua set the example of all fathers as when he said, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Finally, a father prepares his child for the future. Jesus said, Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God has created a great future for you and me. He is offering us eternal life. He doesn't want us to spend eternity without him. He wants us to live in his presence forever, and he provided a way to make that happen. He did this by sending his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die on the cross for our sins. When we put it, our faith in Jesus, our sins are forgiven, and God gives us eternal life. Mm -hmm. Christianity isn't about man finding his own way to God. It's about God reaching out to us through his son. God had a few vision for the future. It's a future spent in heaven with him forever, and he provided a way for you to get there. In the same way, earthly fathers need to do what they can to direct their to direct the future of their children in a way that most benefit the child. Among others, a father should help his child prepare spiritually for the future by bringing them up in the Christian atmosphere, encouraging them to be involved in the church, and challenging to grow in their personal relationship with Christ. God gives us a blueprint for fatherhood because he is the perfect father. He loves us, he gives to us, he expects us to follow him, and he prepares a future for us. These are the earthly things fathers can do for their children, not as a triumph, but a gentle, loving, caring father. If your father is gone, or if you didn't have the relationship you you had with your father that you would have wanted, you could take comfort in the fact that God is your heavenly father, and he is the, exactly the kind of father you want. He loves you, and he will experience fulfillment in this life and for all eternity if you put your faith in him. Closing song is, this is 